How are you feeling? You got John Riggs here today taking a look at games from Color Dreams as well as Wisdom Tree as well as Bunch Games. You can already tell these are completely unlicensed, even says on the back, Color Dreams Incorporated, patent pending, made in Taiwan. All right. So these are just, I mean, I don't, they're homebrews, right? I mean, they're just made by like, you know, a small team of people, sometimes one or two people, if that. Um, and they pumped them out on the NES. They were able to sell them in some stores anyway. I think plenty of stores didn't carry these. Um, and probably for all the right reasons. You're not going to find a seal of quality anywhere on anything like this. Now this one here is from Color Dreams, and we'll talk about this one in the video coming up later on, but there's also Wisdom Tree. Those were the religious version of Color Dreams games, in a way. In fact, these games you could only find in, like, Christian bookstores is where you'd find those ones. And then Bunch Games, there's a few of those, and it's basically just more Color Dreams without actually calling it Color Dreams. There's no reason for the name change. It's, I mean, it's the same game. They even have, like, the same kind of cart and everything. There's over 20 of them, so we're going to look briefly at each one. We're going to rank them along the way. I don't pin these will do well on the ranking system, but we're going to have some fun with it all the same. And I thank you for watching. In fact, if it's your first time watching, make sure you're subscribed. I do at least two videos a week. I'm a huge old school gamer. I like the new stuff too, uh, but I mostly stick with the retro stuff. Starting off with Baby Boomer, not an easy game to find. If you're looking to collect, it's, uh, it's one that has eluded me for years and years. And it plays like a shooter. You can actually use the zapper in this game, which is kind of nice. Or if you don't have the zapper, you can also just use the, um, you know, the target will show up. You just use the D-pad to shoot what you will. The baby always moves. It's one of those kind of games where, like, the baby is just always moving and you have to shoot the obstacles around it. Um, it's terrible, <laughs> but it's playable. So I'm giving it a D. Captain Comic is interesting enough. Um, I wanted to like this game. I actually rented this game at a local grocery store um, when this game came out. And I like the fact that he uses classical music, because there's no copyright on classical music, so, I mean, that's something. And I will give it props for the animation of the worm. The worm in this game, the animation, I thought was pretty cool. But still, if you step on the worm, it hurts you. That's... Uh, just, no. And this game itself, it's terrible, but it's kind of playable. <laughs> so I'm also giving it a D. Here's a game called Challenge of the Dragon, which sounds like it'd be a great game. Challenge of the Dragon for the Nintendo? I mean, that sounds like my kind of game. Until you play it, and then you realize it's nobody's kind of game. <laughs> you can't tell if you're hurting the other person or if they're hurting you, and um, the, 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 screen, the screen moves weirdly, and uh, this game is extremely, extremely rough. I'll give it props for the box art. The box art's actually pretty cool, but the game itself, not so much. Uh, this game is terrible and is not playable. This game is an F. Crystal Mines, actually Crystal Mines isn't ridiculously terrible. Um, I was a huge fan of Boulder Dash and it plays a little bit like Boulder Dash a little bit because um, you're in that kind of like underground area and you can shoot some of the dirt out of the way, shoot the boulders out of the way, and you have to just collect all the items so you can move on to the next stage. So if you're a fan of Boulder Dash, it's not it's not up to Boulder Dash standards, but it's okay-ish, decent-ish. So as I'm ranking these amongst themselves, just because, you know, I, if I have something on this list that ranks maybe higher or lower on it, like another list that I have done for like other companies, I'm just ranking these amongst themselves. So with that said, um, I'm actually putting this as a C. So much of me says I'm not going to find any game higher than a C <laughs> with all these games that I'm looking at. <laughs> And with this Crystal Mines game, keep an eye on it because this game will show up later on uh, with a little graphic uh, edit stuff. King Neptune's Adventures, again from Color Dreams. And we're just going through all the Color Dreams games and we'll go on to the other ones later. Um, it's just bad. That's all I'm going to say about that. It's an F. It looks like it could be cool in a very homebrew kind of way, but no, it's an F. I love the name of this game, Master Chew and the Drunkard Who. Master Chew and the Drunkard Who. Two player simultaneous. So you got a two player game on this list, finally. Um, I did rent this in my local video store and my uh, next door neighbor and I went all the way through it. We beat it. It's not great, but compared to all the other D Color Dream games, it's one of the best. Um, so with that said, it's a C. It's a solid C and that's good <laughs> for Color Dreams. C for Color Dreams. <laughs> I mean, the game plays fine. It's just you're, you're in kind of a smaller stage just collect the eight yin yangs, uh, fight the boss, move on to the next stage. And it's, it's again, it's not completely terrible. Only kind of terrible. Menace Beach from Color Dreams um, should be cool because it's a skateboarding game. And you gotta love the skateboarding games, but uh, people didn't really do skateboarding games very good until much later on. Um, and it's still hard to play. You don't know like if you're hurting the enemy. There's like ninjas and <laughs> stuff. Uh, okay, this, this one's an F. Oh, Metal Fighter, another game that should be cool. 
Looks like a fun shooter. Like, you can be on the ground, you can fly up and, you know, fly around and shoot people. Looks like it should be a fun shooter. It's not. Um, it's... It's terrible, but it's kind of playable. It's a D. I had to think about that for a second. It's, it should be an F, but it's... There are other games that deserve, definitely deserve the F rating. With that said, Operation Secret Storm is an F. <laughs> At least they had the... Um, well, this game came out in 91, Gulf War time and all that. So they actually put, I mean, it's right on the cover, right on the label. You know what you're getting into. Only the game itself is terrible and plays terribly. Um, it's a terrible game, and I'm going to put it as an F. It doesn't mean I wouldn't pick it up if I found one for cheap. <laughs> you know, but, uh, yeah, you know what I mean. Yay, Pesterminator. <laughs> Got it right here. And this game um, is a unique one. Uh, certainly the head detection is terrible. Um, in fact, a lot of things about this game is terrible, but you are a guy with a giant hammer and a mallet and you're just, um, you're crushing mice and eliminating the bugs in these houses. It's fun to look at for a couple seconds, you know, it's like, it's like, you know, applauding the person who made it. It's like, actually, you know, it's another one of those, it's terrible, but it's playable. <laughs> and, uh, I'm putting Pesterminator as a D. Hereticus Conflict is a game that's probably the first time I've ever said, said that name out loud. And I have no clue what I'm doing in this game. Um, I've tried playing it a few times in the past, and it feels like it could be kind of like a, almost like a Sinistar style, where like you're flying around and you have to like land on the planet and all that. But there's more to it than that. And it's that strategy, tactical stuff that I um, just uh, admittedly can't get into. So it's also an F. Raid 2020 is called Raid 2020 because the game is set in the futuristic year of 2020. And looking at this, and knowing what we're going through now, what did they know that we didn't at the time? Hmm. Interesting. Uh, this game's terrible. And uh, the, the idea that you know, where the horizontal slats are in the dock, like when you move up, you end up moving up and back a little bit. You know, like you actually follow it. Uh, that should never be the case in any game. And aside from that, um, it's also just a terrible game to begin with. So Raid 2020 is an F. Well, I feel bad for Robo Demons because Robo Demons should be an awesome game, only it's not. I mean, it's like it's called Robo Demons. I love both of those things. Um, and I do like the fact that it has a little bit of the demon element that you didn't really see in a whole lot of Nintendo games, especially for the time. Uh, would have liked to have seen more like that, and didn't. And this game uh, didn't deliver as well. It's like, you never know if you're hitting the guy. And a lot of these games from Color Dreams, it's like you have to hit even like the e easiest of enemies like multiple times to kill them. Uh, which shouldn't be the case. Easiest enemies, one hit kill. But this one, um, you just can't avoid stuff. And it's terrible. And it's a death. Secret Scout? What's it called? It's called Secret Scout in the Temple of Demise. <laughs> well, th this game is d Demise. I don't know. It's another terrible game. Um, I remember one time I did find this at a record store for like five bucks. Back when it was going for like 50 bucks. I'm sure it's more than that now. Um, so that's my story about Secret Scout, and it plays a lot like that Secret Storm game, which again is terrible. In fact, they probably just use some of the same graphics and everything, and um, same engine, I'm sure. Yeah, no, it's an F. The final game on the Color Dreams side, before we move on to Wisdom Tree, is Silent Assault. And it's actually not a bad game. As far as Color Dreams game go, uh, Silent Assault is decent-ish, as far as the other games go. Um, you know, it just plays kind of like a run and gun, and, you know, it's... It's honestly not a terrible, terrible game. If this game came out as a homebrew, like somebody said, hey, I made, I made this game using, um, you know, some, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm learning how to make Nintendo games. Look at this game I made. I'd probably congratulate them. It's, like, it's not bad. You know, so it's a, it's a C. It's a solid C. All right, we got the Wisdom Tree games. These are those religious games found in, like, Christian bookstores back in the day. Uh, we have Bible Adventures, which is a big yikes. You gotta go around and carry the baby and, um take it to safety <laughs> it's just when i first saw this game i was like is this is this real this is this is legit somebody somebody made this and sold it and um no it's uh it's it's a it's a it's straight to the uh, f category on this one they made a game called bible buffet which you go through it's like a board game it's like a nintendo board game it actually has decent speech for a nintendo game um you spin the wheel um you land on something and you play that stage which usually consists of like picking up vegetables and fighting off the evil vegetables or the pick up the whatever and then fight off the bad whatever in each of those stages as it goes through like food um and there's a bible element in there somewhere i don't know um you know what it's actually terrible game it's kind of playable and it's 
interesting to watch um, all the same. So with Bible Buffet, I'm putting as a D, believe it or not. It's a game I used to have. Um, I remember I remember buying that like in the late 90s because I was like, I've never heard of this. <laughs> Exodus Journey to the Promised Land um, is, if you remember the Crystal Mines from the Color Dreams, it's the same game, just with different graphics. And instead of shooting uh, in this game, you throw W's, which is your it's the word of God in the form of a W. And that's uh, how you defeat enemies, and it's how you uh, uh, break boulders <laughs> and, and remove dirt. <laughs> and um, instead of picking up uh, mines, instead of picking up gems, uh, you pick up uh, milk, apparently. Hmm. So that's that. And, um, I mean, I guess it wouldn't be fair if I had Crystal Mines as a decent game and not this one, uh, Exodus, in the same category. But do I put it as a C? I'm, I'm gonna play, I'm not playing favorites here. If I have Crystal Mines as a C, man, I'm putting, believe it or not, I'm putting Exodus as a C on this list. <laughs> I'm, making, I'm making myself surprised on that one. Let me get the full name, Joshua and the Battle of Jericho, which kind of sounds like an AEW pay-per-view here. I wish they were better. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, they are not. And um, with that, this game goes into the F category. King of Kings is another one of those. Um, has a few games on here, a little bit, a little bit of variety, um, and they're all uh, pretty terrible. <laughs> and I'm putting that one as an F as well. Spiritual Warfare is an interesting one because it gives it more of kind of a. I don't want to compare it to Legend of Zelda. I almost did. Oh my god. Um, sorry. Uh, there's. <laughs> um, there's a different element to this one, unlike the other ones. Um, so for that, I'm putting uh, Spiritual Warfare. You can see the gameplay footage here. I'm putting it as a D, just because it's different a little bit. It looks like they spent at least a little bit of time into this one, unlike some of the other ones, you know? We have Sunday Fun Day. Remember Menace Beach? We talked about that with the Color Dreams games. Well, they released it as Sunday Fun Day, which is the same game, only instead of ninjas, it's like other people that are trying to prevent you from going to church on Sunday on a skateboard in your casual weekend clothes. I have no idea, <laughs> but it's, um, it is, no, it, it, it's, it's a big no is what it is. And it's an F. <laughs> Onto the bunch of games now, there's a few of these and we have Castle of Deceit, which the box art looks cool, but the most deceitful thing about this game is how you look in this game. Hmm. And it plays like every other Color Dreams platformer. It's not great, it's an F. Galactic Crusader is a decent game, believe it or not. Galactic Crusader, I could have seen this in the arcade in the early 80s, right next to Space Invaders and Galaxian and stuff like that. Um, if they would have made this game for the Atari 2600, I think it would have sold well. Um, you play as what kind of looks like Mothra, which I'm okay with. And it's just a standard, it's a standard shooter. It's just a standard space shooter as you're uh, shooting other enemies out of the sky and sometimes planets. <laughs> <laughs> and your weapon gets upgraded too, so it's actually, I mean, as far as uh, these Color Dreams, Bunch Games, Wisdom Tree games go, it's alright. It's a C. Mission Cobra should be alright, because it's like, oh, it looks like a cool, you know, box art looks great, and that's the other thing about these games, a lot of these box arts are actually pretty decent. Um, but with Mission Cobra, oh, it, it, you see that overhead shooter, you're like, oh, I like overhead shooters, I can do this, and you can't do this. <laughs> it just moves weird, it moves awkward. Um, it's, it's not great. It is, um... I mean, it's playable, so I kind of want to put it as, an, as a D, but I'm putting it as an F, just because um, it's it's not that playable. Moon Ranger could have been a lot better if it was a better game, <laughs> which goes without saying. <laughs> um, it's a it's a side-scrolling shooter, and you're shooting stuff out of the way from the from the sky, and it's kind of sluggish, slow moving, and um, I like how you can turn around and shoot behind you. That's something, um, but that's not much. It's not enough to get it out of the F zone, so it's another F for me. We have Tag and Dragon. This game is weird. Um, I like the fact that your characters are actually a pretty good size, um, but you have to go around and you have to eat the other uh, dragons. Like you have to like bite them in the tail. And if they hit you anywhere, then then you're dead and you take damage and all that. But you can also get some power ups too. Uh, however, it's just it's not great, um, and it's a, it's a little hard to you don't move any faster. So you just have to like outsmart them, but then sometimes they come down the aisle anyway and get you from behind or whatever, and you're trying to, you know, bite them. Um, it's, no, it's, it's another one that's um, <laughs> better left than not, and it is also an F. Well, hopefully, if anything, you've learned a few things about some games that maybe you've never heard of or maybe you didn't even know existed, um, sometimes for the better. And don't worry about games like this. I've also done videos on other companies like Tecmo, Trade West, uh, Capcom, 
Tengen, so many more too. So make sure you check out those videos. I thank you for watching. And like I said, I do at least two videos a week. So there's always something new coming up. Make sure you're subscribed. I'll see you again real soon.